Hello everyone and welcome back to my stock career in Kerbal Space Program 1.11. In this video I want to handle some of our lingering contracts, uh, specifically the ones to do with Gilly, which we sort of parked an uh, asteroid around in the previous episode, but we still got this satellite in a specific orbit of Gilly contract. That wants a survey scanner, which could be helpful, and uh, otherwise it just needs to be an unkerbled probe with an antenna and can generate power. And here we want to expand Gilly Station. Antenna docking port can generate power. It needs to add, because we're expanding the station, add eight Kerbal capacity and have four pilots on the station in total when we have just one. Well, we've got a lot of leftover pilots that aren't as useful anymore, so that's fine. Uh, but we also need 4,365 units of liquid fuel. And we had sent a vessel that had that sort of deal before. I want to take a look at what the situation is with that. I have completely forgotten. So we'll check on that. We also need to rescue Phil Cell in orbit of Eve and return him safely. Phil Cell is not a pilot, unfortunately. Phil Cell is a scientist. And so, well, let's see. Let's see the EVE mega ship and see what its situation is. Okay, so this was the mega station ship and... Well, it doesn't have enough liquid fuel, among other things. I guess it's just gonna stay here. It's got the little bus that we had. Our little transfer pod for Gilly. I'm surprised we haven't gotten the fill cell already. But we only have 753 meters per second with this. Um, and that part is depleted. I guess we'll just leave this be. I don't know exactly what we want to do with it. Fill cell doesn't seem that far away from this, but it's not like this can bring him back. I mean, this could rendezvous with fill cell. I just don't think that that's a very useful thing for it to do, necessarily. Okay, well, back to Space Center. I will concoct a mission to deal with the contracts that we have to deal with. Okay, so what I've cooked up is a modification on the Ike Jewel mission. And we had to expand the crew capacity here. It used to have a cupola only, but we needed eight crew capacity. So I've got two hitchhiker storage containers. And we don't need to bring that many Kerbals back. I don't care about our pilots. We'll, uh, we'll leave them there for the time being. We do need to bring back at least one Kerbal. And that is uh, Phil Cell from Orbit of Eve. And so I've got this uh, capsule, just a Mark I cabin with a controller. Because Phil Cell is a scientist, so we need a controller. Well, we'll have to have a controller to get out to him anyway. And uh, plenty of fuel and then some spark engines. And so that will go get Phil Cell. It has an antenna because it'll be doing things remotely for the most part and not crewed. Uh, but yeah, so we've got eight crew capacity here. We're going to have to dump three pilots in or two pilots if we want to pick up the one on the mega station. But I think we'll just send three. And they're going to be part, uh, sort of in jeopardy because we don't have a way of saving them. They'd have to parachute out or something. Uh, because there isn't another, it isn't a three-person pod up there. Anyway, uh, we have ample antennas, obviously, and we are using nuclear engines because it did want the 4,365 units of liquid fuel, so we might as well bring nuclear engines. But I've got two so that we don't have as much burn time. Oh, I tucked that one in, but not this one. Let me tuck that in, too. Uh, but we also had the probe mission that... Uh, it wanted a satellite in a specific orbit of Gilly with a resource survey scanner on the satellite. So that is the resource survey scanner. And antenna, it's got two of these uh, high gain antennae and it can generate power with the solar panels. It's got uh, ant engine and some Oscar B fuel tanks and the controller. Um, I might want more power capacity than just the 10 electric charge though. So. Let me just quickly modify it. Come to think of it. Actually, it's got the... This thing takes a lot to transmit. I don't know if we've scanned Gilly before. So, why don't I just... Ooh. 
Those are big. I'm gonna tuck those in. Hopefully that'll be enough power. We'll see. Anyway, so just a little afterthought. And we've got radiators here, docking ports, RCS ports, because this has to dock itself to the existing station. Unfortunately, the existing station doesn't really have a big docking port. Well, not only not a big docking port, just not a regular docking port. So we're going to have to use this tiny docking port here. The pod doesn't have a docking port because we have no expectation that it's going to redock with anything. So if it needs to be saved, we'll send out a claw. We've got the magnetometer and uh, uh, gravioli detector mainly to counterbalance the antenna on this side. So that's just for that purpose. Okay, maybe we should do a goo instead of the magnetometer. I'm changing things up constantly. Okay, yeah, I think we've done the magnetometer there and we can bring the goo back with the scientists. The scientists can reset the goo container, in fact. So that might be helpful. I don't know if we've brought back goo from Eve. It seems unlikely. I usually just do the low-hanging fruit as far as science is concerned. Put our scientists to use for once. Okay. So the heat shield there is underdone by half. I'm not doing it precisely or anything. And uh, these solar panels are still on pistons. That worked out fine. And we are using this launcher again. Uh, but this time, we have put the parachutes on... This is actually probably a bad idea. I kept mentioning it before, but it's probably a bad idea. I've put the parachutes on this side. They'll still come down this side first before the parachutes deploy. Now try and land on this side with the flat bottom here. However, it does occur to me that most of the mass is on this side and now overwhelmingly on this side which will be at the top of the vehicle when it lands, which makes for a very tippy situation. But, hey, let's just try it and find out, right? I mean, we, we can foresee what's going to happen here, and of course we're using these dinky landing legs. I w wasn't satisfied with the cheap, be larger landing legs I had on the previous attempt, so yeah. But we have to uh, put at risk certain kerbals, and... Tansy Kerman is actually our most experienced pilot right now. So it'll be the other three, following our usual pattern. Jebediah, Valentina, El Mel and Melrick. Okay, let's go with the Gilly Station expansion. I've already time warped to the Eve window. Okay. So, throttle up, SAS on. And launch. At least it's sort of a tested launcher. We've got wobbliness. Gotta auto stretch some more tanks. Okay, looking good so far. Our crew is placid, a very experienced pilot crew here. Oh, there's some serious wobbling. Oh god, oh god, okay, hold on. Uh, guys? No, come on. Okay, that, that was the game being poopy. <laughs> uh, that was the game, what? Okay. Yeah, that was just not right. Hmm. But we're sort of in a pickle, aren't we? The nuclear engines can't, like, land this thing. And we don't have... Uh, it happened to take off all our parachutes. If our parachutes had been up here, it'd be safer. I think this calls for a redesign. Um, hmm. Well, I mean, in principle, we can try and save them. But I, I don't want to lose the money. I think this is just a uh, game wigging out on me. I really do. Uh, but I have I don't have reverts or anything, and I don't want to change the setting. Uh, okay, fine. I should have had a 
pod. The one time I don't have a pod to... Oh, let's not rescue Jeb first. <laughs> Change the priority here. Let's go for Val as a... Hopefully, the pod will be safe. Decouple. Alright, so first, let's just... Get that all set. Okay, I don't know if Val is going to be like perfectly safe like that, but now we have to deal with this lot. We'll have them bail out as necessary. Yeah, the nuclear engines are definitely not slowing it down. And we, we should have it at a purge line or something. I want everybody to be in render range. So we're relatively close to Val. Alright, let's focus on um, Melrick first. <laughs> okay, minimum pressure. Deploy, shoot. Oh, it's armed. This says deployed. EVA. Come on. Hurry up. Let me EVA him. Ah. Uh, lots of things happening. Okay. Shoots deployed. Val. Jeb. Melrick. Melrick. Jeb. Val. It looks like Val will fully deploy first, and we're all in render range right now. Okay. And Jeb. Whoa, that's G forces. Crazy. Okay, then the splashdown here. Okay. Seems to be floating. Good. So Jeb is fine here. We've got the full deployment here. Okay. Now, if we could get Jeb to go down a little bit faster. Is that Val's pod there? Uh, I lost sight of it. Oh, there we go. Come on, Jeb. Stop showboating. Okay, grab onto the pod. Uh-oh, Jeb is sinking. Recover vessel. Uh-oh. We've got a, another Kerbal in flight. I didn't expect my Kerbals to sink. I thought they could flo float and swim, but apparently not. They used to be able to. I was planning on having them all grab onto the pod. Well, Melrick in flight first. Um, well, let's just grab that one, and that has Val in, so that's good. We'll get whatever this is splashed down. Okay. Oh no! Oh no, a Melrick disappeared. No! Did Melrick die? Oh, was Melrick recover? I, I, uh oh. Ah, uh, I killed Melrick just because I uh, recovered the other part instead of going to Melrick immediately. That's not fair. That's really our first Kerbal death. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, uh, I thought I would have killed somebody by now, but. Ah, oh, that sucks. That was negligence on my part. I should have gone to Melrick. Melrick would have splashed down just fine. Ah, uh, so close to being a successful failure sort of situation. Very Apollo 13-ish. Alright, well, I think we should reevaluate our launch vehicle. Hmm. Yeah, I think this calls for, uh... 
I mean, you know, it's worked before, but obviously something worked horribly now. I think we need to simplify. Okay, so we're going with a non-reusable system this time, uh, just to keep things simple. And I had originally thought about using the Rhino engine uh, down here, but I don't think it's worth it. Uh, let's uh, do some analysis here. Uh, you can see our total delta V. Let's just go with the total delta V here, 5,324. And I've got these engines, the skiff engines, and the six of them, and we are 162,706 funds. I take those off, and the Rhino engine does give a little bit more delta V. Okay, 10,966. So 10,966 versus 11,067. So that's maybe a hundred meters per second different why why okay stop that yeah so it's about a hundred meters per second different but the cost is 162 versus 173 so this costs about 10,000 more for a hundred meters per second more doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me uh, so um, because we're using six of these engines, that's 1,800 kilonewtons, a better sea level ISP, worse vacuum ISP. Uh, but six of these is, what is it, uh, 13,800, whereas the Rhino engine is 25,000, so it's more than 10,000 more. And for that, you're getting 200 kilonewtons more thrust and 10 seconds more ISP in vacuum, but worse sea level ISP. And that's important because the Clydesdale boosters, while really powerful, only have one degree of gimbling. And we probably do want to light the core engine on the ground. Otherwise, we might not have enough control. And we'll probably throttle it down, but we won't throttle it down too much because here we see the vacuum thrust weight ratio, even after we get done with a lot, is just one here. So off the ground, we are 1.46. And then once the boosters are done, we have a thrust weight ratio of 1.03. Now, if you take a look at our total here, we've got more than 4,600 meters per second. So we can carry a heavier load than this. So that's good. And we might want to use this in the future. But anyway, we will see how this works. And so I'm going with the six skiffs for the time being. One other flaw is that clustering six skiffs, they stick out a little bit unless you want the novel nozzles to clip. So I've put the nose cones to take care of that. Anyway, this will be a cheaper launch because we don't have a whole lot of parachutes and stu such. So, And another control core down here is just a dumb rocket at the bottom. And hopefully that's safer? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. Um, we lost one pilot accidentally, and we're still going to risk three pilots here. And that's all our pilots now. Hmm. You might want to bring somebody back eventually. But anyway. Uh, this is an untested launcher now. Well, let's go. I might have wanted to put, wanted to put more actual struts on. Oh well. Anyway, SAS on throttle is up. Here we go again. And launch. First time using the Clyde Stales. Might be the first time using the skiffs, I don't recall. We've got a healthy thrust weight ratio, so we'll start turning. It could do with more gambling these Clyde Stales. Just saying. I can feel it. Okay, booster set. Well, at least those go go off cleanly. But yeah, tons of extra delta V for a heavier payload. Or for recovery of this? Is it worth recovering this, honestly? Hmm. Okay. After a coast to apoapsis here, finishing off orbit. Well, we might as well have this booster send it out and save the Delta V. We do want to transport enough liquid fuel. I hope it's not draining anything from up here. 
engine plates are always suspicious. But yeah, we want to deliver as much liquid fuel as possible to Gilly. Alright, well that'll do. Let's see. So 835 meters per second left, and we'll use that for part of our... It'll leave this in a awkward high orbit, but who knows? Who knows what we do with that later. Once we complete the tech tree, there's going to be a lot of incentive to do wacky things with shuttles. But also, um, as far as continuing on after that, I, I don't want to use any part mods for this, but I might use Contract Configurator to give us more interesting contracts as a way of proceeding. I think that would be wise. Well, that's pretty good. We really got the right window this time. Okay, there's a uh, even counter. Painless, no mid-course adjustment necessary. But we do want to go in the same direction as Gilly, which this is not. Anyway, we'll take this transfer for now and plot the rest of it out later. Okay, getting ready for ignition here. And three, two, one, ignition. Okay, nukes. No, it occurs to me, I hope they don't drain these tanks. Uh, I think the tanks up here have higher priority anyway. Thanks to the previous stage, it wasn't a very long burn time, so hopefully we're fairly accurate on this burn. Okay. Let's see. That is not what I plotted, though. Uh, that's a bit off, too. <laughs> um, let's do a mid-course adjustment, I think. Well, that's a lot of inclination with respect to Gilly, but I think we'll go with it. So we'll do that correction in 19 days and then plot the rest. This looks okay. Sort of a proper spaceship kind of thing going on here. Okay, well, we're close enough to the correction. Okay, very good. Alright, that looks okay to me, so what we're going to do is manually capture. Meanwhile, hopefully we're going in the same direction as Phil's cell. Let's see. No, we're not. <laughs> Uh, well, then the little ship is going to come with us to Gilly, or at least a high orbit, so it can flip its orbit easier. Yeah, Gilly is all the way... Well, we don't know where it's going to be when we get there, but it's definitely not meeting up with us right there right now. So, anyway, we will leave that be. It'll take 257.6 to capture, and we've got good sunlight. Our delta V reading is as you see it. We've got 6,000, but again, we're trying to deliver more than 4,000 units. There's some units of liquid fuel on the station, so we can be okay on that, even if we don't have the 4,365 on here. We don't have four pilots yet because there's one on the station. We don't have a facility supporting 18 Kerbals yet because, well, we have capacity on the station so yep hopefully all that gets checked on we go